Maurice Jones-Drew. He uh, is the NFL Network analyst and uh, I think working the Rams game tonight. Is that Are you working the Rams game tonight, Mojo? Yes, I am, Dan. How are you? It's been Good, a long sir. time. Good, sir. Can you have too much talent on a team? Uh, I, I never think you can have too much talent, especially – it just depends. If you have a lot of guys that are outspoken, then maybe yes. But if you have a ton of talent where guys understand the system, then there shouldn't be a problem at all. Well, maybe can you have too many personalities on a team? Uh, it, it, it all depends. Um, I think Jacksonville has a ton of personalities, but they find a way to make it work. Uh, everybody on that Jags defense feels like they're the best. I mean, and it may just be defensively you have to have a ton of personalities. Offensively, you need your quarterback to be that alpha male uh, that kind of can drive and make sure everyone knows what they're doing and they, you know, become that real leader. What – we look at the Rams, there's a lot of talent there, but what what could be the negative here for you, uh, bigger picture with them? Oh, they uh, Depth. They they, ha- they don't have a lot of depth right now. They have a lot of front first starters that are very talented, but you're looking at the depth behind. When you, you look at a team, uh, even though they lost this weekend, the New Orleans Saints, when we played them in the week, when the Rams played in week four, uh, they had – they're back. The guys were playing in the fourth preseason game. Your, you know, second, third string guys were all four or five year players. So uh, that's what you you want to kind of be able to grow to. And, and Ch- Sean Payton and the Saints have done a great job with that. I think the Rams are on their way building that right now. Obviously, when you're you know spending out the money you you spend, you're going to be able to keep guys only on their first contract and then have to kind of groom some new um, younger players. But uh, they're getting there. I want to say they're about a year or two away to having that the depth that you need when you know to, to make a run at the Super Bowl. What did you make of Aaron Rodgers' night last night? Listen, I, I mean, first thing I thought in my mind, came, well, the first thing that came to mind was Paul Pierce, right? You remember Paul yes. Pierce against the Lakers back in the day? Yeah. Gets carried off the field or off the court and then put in a wheelchair and then all of a sudden comes back. I mean, I, I, listen, I'm not a – I can't really speak on it, but the Packers' chances of going to the Super Bowl have gone up ever since then. Really? That 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 was that was Aaron Rodgers' Paul Pierce moment. Uh, the Celtics didn't win the championship in L.A., so teams got to be prepared for that. Khalil Mack, nice little debut for him, but I was surprised that John Gruden didn't reach out to Khalil Mack during these negotiations and just almost say, Can, "How do we make this work?" Uh, how surprised were you that it, it almost feels like the Raiders really had no interest in in re-signing him? Well, I'll say this. This is kind of after doing a ton of research and getting my emotions out of it because I I grew up a Raiders fan. Um, This is kind of what Gruden has done throughout his whole coaching tenure. Um, He always keeps – he tries to get veteran defensive guys uh, on lower deals, doesn't like to pay his defensive guys, but loves to pay his offensive guys. So um, you Mm -hmm. saw what he did in Tampa after they won the Super Bowl, traded or or not traded, but got rid of Sapp, got rid of Simeon Rice. Uh, some older veteran guys kind of came in to try to replace those guys. So that that that's his his playbook. That's his scheme. That's what he wants to do. He doesn't like to pay the big time players on defense. He loves to pay the guys on offense. Granted, he's an offensive guy. But Khalil Mack, when I was there, Dan, I was uh, I think I was in year nine. And Khalil Mack was a rookie. We knew from day one, the day he walked in the building and started working out, that there was something different about him. As soon as we got the pads on. You you saw the way he he rushed the passer both as a linebacker as a defensive end the way he ran to the ball the way he did the things he did as a rookie we knew that he would, he had the potential of being a Hall of Fame player um, those guys you just can't let out of building I don't care what your your scheme is or your philosophy those are guys that change those and you need like you said you need talent to win uh, you know I was I was told once by a coach uh, how coaches are graded when you have good players. You're a good coach. When you have <laughs> great players, you're a great coach. When you have bad players, you're fired. And so that's that's what it comes down to. You need players to win in this game, and you have to have talent around you to be able to make some plays that are off script, i.e. Aaron Rodgers and what he was able to do after coming back and, and making plays off script or, you know, Khalil Mack find a way to get the ball out. And rip. You need guys to do the extra, the little things uh, that help you get ahead in, in games. Maurice Jones-Drew, NFL Network analyst, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Uh, what advice would you give Saquon Barkley? 
Uh, I mean, stay patient. Uh, I thought early in the game watching it, um, he was a little – he tried to hit the big run, the yeah. big run. You just have to stay patient. They'll, they'll come to you. You know, uh, the offensive line will settle in. You played arguably the best defense or one of the top two defenses in the league in Jacksonville, and you're able to break a big run when it, when it you know, when that opportunity presented itself. But don't try to go 70, 80 yards every time. Continue to, to take the four or five. Because when you take the, the, the four and five in the first quarter, second quarter that becomes seven, eight. Third quarter that becomes 10 to 12. And then fourth quarter it becomes the 60, 70 yard runs. I think that's great advice. And I, I, I felt like there was a little bit of Barry Sanders there where he was dancing a little bit, get one yard, lose a yard, get three yards, and then he gets 68. I, I got to have him lower his head. I had to have him going in there and, you know, getting four and five yards uh, occasionally and not trying to just set it up, you know, for a home run. Well, Dan, you know, we, we can't lower our heads anymore, so you have to okay. use a different terminology. All right. Lower your, your shoulder. Yeah, lower Drop your shoulder. Your shoulder. Yeah. Lower you your shoulder. There we go. I don't want you to get guys fined because okay. they were listening to us and no. then we get in trouble. I, we could get fined. Hopefully not suspended, but uh, fined. If you're Le'Veon Bell... Did the Steelers' game plan get your attention yesterday with James Conner? Oh, no no question. And I, and I think that's why Le'Veon's not there. Um, because they have too many touches for James Conner? Oh, my, listen, again, he, he has to weigh his potential of getting injured, i.e. what happened to Aaron Rodgers, someone falls on your leg, you can't, you, you're done, and then the, the potential of an, or a big payday, right? And so this is a business decision. I wrote an article on NFL.com about it that – if I could do it all over again when I held out a, um, what, about six years ago, that I should have waited till week 10, one, to show, to prove my worth to the team, and two, to, to conserve my body. Because I think when it was about week seven, I ended up breaking my foot, and then that was kind of the end of my career. After that, I, I couldn't really bounce back from it. So, um, you know, I haven't uh, – I wrote an article saying that we know that Pittsburgh and what they like to do, they're going to run their guys. That's what Pittsburgh wants to do. They're going to run the ball, and they're going to do everything. To see James Conner get 31 touches, how many touches do you think Le'Veon Bell would have got then? And 31, most of those were carries. Yeah. I want to say he had 31 carries and five catches. So you can go 31 carries and 10 catches by Le'Veon. Yeah. Or 31 carries and eight catches by Le'Veon. And, and that's, I mean, again, they're going to win him into the ground. You're starting off. Week one of a 16-game season, almost getting 40 touches. So you're talking, let's just, what, 40 times 16? Does anyone have a calculator over there? I am a math. Oh, that's four. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. That's what, 400 and? A lot. That's, it's a lot of touches. It's over 400 touches. Yeah. And so that's why you have to protect yourself in these situations from these teams because the team, in their mind, all they want to do is win a championship. They don't care about – your kids, they don't care about your family. The next man, the next man up model is, is a is a great uh, response. Uh, but but you're great, getting you're paying him fourteen million dollars. You got to get something out of him. Well, is it what, so so. But this is the thing. What is fourteen million dollars when you see David Johnson get thirty million over three years, and then you get Todd Gurley gets forty five over six, right? That's not that's not market value. And and, and Le'Veon understands that he's an exceptional player, and he's get paid as such. Now. We, we talk about all the time, uh, well, we don't talk about, I talk about all the time, is knowing your worth. And this is, a, this is a great thing, showing the franchise tag isn't really the worth of what Le'Veon Bell is. Le'Veon Bell isn't just a running back. He's a dynamic offensive weapon that deserves to get paid as such. Now, because there wasn't a guy out there that, that had that deal yet, Pittsburgh shouldn't have been afraid to go out there and set the market with their player. But they were, and this is the consequence with that. Yeah. I just, I find it... Difficult to believe that Le'Veon Bell, he wants to conserve himself because he doesn't care about the Steelers. He doesn't care about his teammates. He he's no, that has nothing to do. He loves his teammates. No, no, he no because he's not going to be there next year. Mojo, he's not going to be there next year. So all he cares about. But Dan, that doesn't mean he doesn't care about his teammates. Uh, Okay, so let me say this: if someone came right now, let's say another network offered you more money than you're making, aren't you going to leave? For the most part, I can't. You, if you got a better deal, you, you would you would you would try to leave. That's that's I've seen it multiple times in this I, business. I, not People not with me. Them. I've been offered I was offered better money to leave ESPN a couple of times and never did that. I've been offered money to leave what I have now, and I've I've turned that down. But the, well, you're, I, but you're, I'm you know you're the unicorn. I, the, I would not do that. But I couldn't I couldn't do that. I mean this is I understand that that 
It's a short career you have. He's two years older than Todd Gurley. Um, I think Le'Veon you Bell to maximize it, his earning potential. I know, but he right? doesn't care what happens to the Steelers this year, right? But the, Dan, but listen though, this is this, so. Let me let me paint this picture for you. Right. He played on the franchise tag last year. He came in. Pittsburgh said, "We're going to get the deal done at the end of the year. We just need you to come and do your thing." He does it. Four hundred touches last year. They gave him. They gave him three. Four hundred times getting hit. Didn't they give him a three-year and then deal? They don't even. They don't even give him a deal. Of his value. They gave him a three-year deal that, that was going to be $15 million a year. $19 million guaranteed. That, that was, that's all as a running back that you can look at as a guarantee part because majority of the time we don't get to finish our whole, our whole deal because the nature of our position. So when Le'Veon turns down $19 million guaranteed and then a week later, two weeks later, Ty Gurley gets 45, it makes sense. Right? And then, and then a month later, David Johnson gets 30. And then we call Le'Veon selfish and saying that he, you know, like to me. But they didn't sit I, out. They they didn't say I'm not going to play during a regular season tag. game. They weren't on the franchise tag. But he doesn't have a contract right now. He has, he's not under contract right now, Dan. Then why did his and teammates? I, and I understand the frustration from the fans, like like when I was no, but his, I was but his teammates, Mojo, his linemen called him out. So this and, and this is what I say. This is what I say to his linemen. If they were so concerned, why didn't they go to the to the management and have those responses, that, that much energy and that much enthusiasm, and say that to Kevin Colbert or the Rooney family, and say, we need to get him in here. And, and, and not, don't wait till August to do it. Do it in April when you're in OTAs in May. Go out there and show that type of energy then, and that's what a real teammate does. A real, a real teammate does that. When I held out, my teammates never came out and said, oh, you're selfish, this and that. They understood the business. But and he, so I, 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 don't, I don't understand from that standpoint what those players are talking about when they know they should have had enough uh, confidence as they did in the media to go to the management and say and blame management. The same way Charles Haley did when the Emmett Smith was holding out and he went to Jerry Jones was like, Jerry, what are you doing? We need this guy to win. If we're going to win, we need this guy. Maybe the Steelers feel like they don't need him. Maybe they don't. And we'll, and we'll see as the season goes on. I, I don't, when do you think he comes back? At the end back? of the day, you, you need players. Uh, if, it was me, I, if it was me, I wouldn't come back until after week 10 and whenever the last day I have to, to get their accrued season. That's, that's, and then Vincent Jackson did that a couple years ago, uh, came back after week 10, played the six weeks, hit free agency, and got a big deal. Went to Tampa, got, play, played well in Tampa, and was fine. So, I mean, again, teams right now, teams are – you know, we're in this, this new CBA where the cap is going up. You have players that are very that are playing at an exceptional level who need to get compensated as such, right? We, we don't – I'm going to ask you a question. Who would you rather have on your team right now, Le'Veon Bill or Sam Bradford? Le'Veon Bill. Okay, then why can't Le'Veon get $20 million a year then? Because Sam has got a one-year deal for $20 million. It's it's the quarterbacking not, position. That's no, that's no, the market. No. He is. You shouldn't you shouldn't do that because it, some it, quarterbacks it, are worth that money. And when you pay a quarterback, i.e., what we seen uh, before with the Ravens, right? When they paid Joe Flacco, they couldn't pay anyone else. Sometimes it's not the quarterback; it's the other players around. You need to pay guys for their value and what they do for your organization. Sometimes, if you're if I'm Pittsburgh and I see okay, Le'Veon has done X, Y, and Z for me. I need to go out there and make sure that we compensate him for what he's done and what he's been. He's been one of the top back, if not the top back, the last four or five years in the league. I agree. and But it's apples to oranges where you're saying Sam Bradford to no, Le'Veon Bell. No, yeah, it's it's it is. The because it's, no, it's all the same. No, because the position the has... Why, why does the quarterback, real quick, Dan, why does the quarterback, why are we okay with the quarterback making so much money? Why, why are we okay with that? We're because like, it's the most important position in all of sports. Okay, so when, when the defense won it uh, with the Broncos, when Peyton Manning was not Peyton Manning, yep. and their whole defense won it, mm -hmm. it wasn't that important, right? It's still when the most important. When the Seattle Seahawks it, won it, when the Seattle Seahawks, now there's certain players like Tom Brady, who's the most important player on his team, yes, and Aaron Rodgers, yes. 
but a lot of these other teams, that position is not the most important position on the field, on their team. It's rare to have a team that goes to the Super Bowl, wins the Super Bowl, and you don't have a great quarterback. It's really, really okay. So, rare. Joe, so Nick Foles last year was a great was a was he a great quarterback? He had a great game. He was had he, he had great two great no. He had two great games. Okay, well then there you go. He been he beat Tom Brady. A team won. He the team won. This remember. This, okay, so we. How many how many Super Bowl MVPs have gone to running backs? Well, that, that that's voted on by the writers. Oh or, no 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 no! Like no, I don't know who. No, I don't, I no, don't know. no 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 no. You can't Terrell have it. One one. Can't Terrell have it both Davis ways. A defense can't win MVP. Peyton who didn't Peyton Manning win MVP or Von Miller won it that year? Yes. Who else? Um, the year that the Ravens beat the Niners, did Joe Flacco win MVP that year? The Super Bowl MVP. When the Raiders, when the Ravens beat the, the Ray Ravens Lewis, beat the Niners. wasn't Ray Lewis the MVP? I don't know. I don't think. I don't know if Ray Lewis was the MVP. I don't. I don't remember. He was. A, I thought it was Joe Flacco. Okay. I I think that Ray was an MVP in the first Super Bowl. Flacco in the, in the second yeah. one. Yes. I, I know. You, I, I don't have computers here. I'm uh, helping my kids get ready for school. Okay. All but right. No. I just again. I'm just saying. Certain teams. Yes, the quarterback is the most important position, but others it's not, and, and so. Those teams don't go out there and just say, oh, well, we got to pay the quarterback $20 million. Like, no, no, you do not. You don't have to do that. The market has been established at that position. My, I have an issue that the running back, I think, has been de-emphasized. And there's only a – you have a smaller window at running back than I feel like at any other position, and it's unfair to them. That by the time you have that first deal and you're done with five years, I don't know if I want you anymore. And, you know, it's hard for and, 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 the running backs I, to get a second big contract. No, you're right. And I think when you look at the Cowboys, what they did with DeMarco Murray, that was another situation that you have to pay attention to and look at where the Cowboys ran DeMarco Murray that year into the ground and then let him hit free agency, right? And then he ended up getting a deal by the Eagles, played a year there, the ends up playing a couple with Tennessee, and that was kind of the end of it. But you have to – these are all business decisions that you have to weigh at the age of 26, right, where – a lot of people at the age of 26 aren't weighing these business decisions, understanding that, okay, if I go out and play um, for this $14 million and I get banged up or I get hurt, that's all I get. Why did, right? why he's, does trying to, it, he's trying to limit. But why doesn't he just say, getting injured. look, I'll come back, but I want to split time with James Conner? Because Pittsburgh's not going to do that. You can say whatever you want, but once you get in the game, Pittsburgh's going to run you. We we just saw that. We just saw that on 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 that on Sunday. But you're going to split time with James Conner. That way, that you... how, how do we? But 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 Dan, how do we know that? If you get into the crunch time, if you get in the crunch time of a game, a coach is going to put his best player out there regardless. Okay, but yeah, I'm going to put him in you. for the important plays there. But I'm going to use James Conner, and maybe I split the carries. Maybe you're. You're, you know, I'm going to cut your touches in half, but I'm going to use you when I need to use you for big moments there. That's why I'm paying you $14 million. Right. This way, at least you get paid. We get your services. We understand that, you know, you don't want to have the wear and tear here. It's a business decision, but we need you in, in uniform here. I, it, so I'll, I'll give you, I can give you a better example of that. I, I want to say it was 2011. I was coming off a of knee surgery, and the coaches that kind of came up with a, uh, a play count for me, right? We, they didn't want me to have so many carries by the third quarter. Mm -hmm. And we were in a tight game with Tennessee, and Coach Del Rio looks up, and I had 22 carries into the third quarter. I think they wanted me to have, like, 12. And he was like, what is going on? This is not what we talked about. Well, they abused you. Yeah, they abused you. Again? They abused you. Right, but once you, this is what I'm saying. So once you get into the heat of the fire – and the game and all the emotions going on, they're not worried about a, a half a play count and what you guys talked about. They're just trying to – their focus is to win the game. And, and, and that's when you utilize your best players, right? That's, where, just, that's why you saw Big Ben trying to throw it to A.B. a ton. And if Le'Veon's there, they're going to definitely try to get him the ball. So you can go in there and say, well, hey, look, you know, give me half the touches and, and I'll come in. But we know that's not going to work. I, I know. Mean, I'm trying to find Le'Veon, something. Like you said, Le'Veon is – Two years older than than Ty Gurley, he wasn't born last night. He knows the game, and he did, and they did it to him last. Because then he would be younger so than Gurley if that was the case. If he was born last night, right? Okay. Or two years all right, get older. the kids off to school. All right, I gotta, I gotta go back to work. I, I wish I could keep talking to you. I miss you guys hey, so I, much. I love talking but to tell, you. Tell, tell all the people, man, know your worth that are listening, and understand your worth. When you know your worth, you're never wrong. You're fighting for what's right. He's and more, that's what Le'Veon's doing.
Thank you. No problem. All right. Talk to you soon. It's Maurice Jones Drew. That was good. It was fun. I like that. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.